Hi everyone, Matthew Monas here with Mobile Syrup. And just a few days ago, Google announced a new version of Android and released a developer's preview, otherwise known as Android N. Now we don't know what the N stands for, there's a lot of guessing going around, but we'll find out closer to the launch date, which will be sometime at the end of the summer, early spring. Now the reason why this is so crazy is because Google never even talks about the next version of Android until the Google I.O. conference that happens later on this year. Now if you have a Nexus 6, a Nexus 6P, a Nexus 5X, a a Nexus 9 or a Pixel C tablet, you can go ahead and download the factory images and install it on your device. So here are our first impressions of Android N. All right, after you've gone through the initial setup process, this is the first screen you'll see. This is the Android N new wallpaper. It's pink, it's very minimalistic, and if you guys like it, I'll place a link in the description down below so that you can go ahead and download your own copy. Now, at first glance, everything looks like Marshmallow, but there are a lot of under the hood changes, and the first one that everyone is talking about or the most excited about is split screen. Stock Android is finally getting split screen. And in order to access it, all you have to do is tap the recent apps button on the bottom right and you'll be presented with all your current applications that are open. Now you can select the application you want by long pressing on the header and then dragging it to the top and it will begin to split the screen. You can resize it by moving the thing up and down. And of course, you can also use it in landscape mode, which is great if you have a tablet or a bigger device. Now to get rid of split screen, all you have to do is swipe the screen all the way down and you'll be back to just your original screen. And there's also another change to the recent apps button as well. If you tap it once, for example, you can go through each app one by one, which makes it a little bit more granular instead of actually scrolling through all of them with your finger. So next up on the list is notifications. And the notifications menu, as you can see, is a lot more intuitive, has a lot more information. At first glance, this is what it looks like, and it gives you a little bit more of the title in your email. And if I wanna see more of it, I can either use a two finger swipe and swipe down, or I can push the little down arrow button, and it will give me more information about that specific email. Now you can also reply to the email directly from the notification, or you can archive it as well. And if you wanna get rid of it, you can simply swipe it to the left or right, kind of like how you always could, but you're also presented with a cog button that gives you a few more settings. Now there's no settings yet, but I'm sure there will be once Gmail gets an update down the road. Now Google's also releasing the API to developers so they can implement their notifications in this new system as well. Now above the notifications are your quick settings menu. It's very minimalistic looking now. You have a few toggles that you use on a daily basis. And if you want to extend that, of course, you could either use the down arrow, or of course, the two finger swipe down. Now the first thing you'll see is that the Android beta program icon is there letting you know that this is a developer's preview and it's not a final version of N. On top of that, you have an edit button that allows you to add different toggles to your main menu. And a new one that's actually arisen is Data Saver. So what Data Saver does is basically allows you to disable data whenever you're connected to a mobile network. So this is great for someone who's trying to not go over their data caps or has a very small data cap. You enable this and every time you move away from Wi-Fi, you won't use any data. So it's kind of a neat little trick. Next up on the list is the actual settings menu. And settings has gotten a big change as well. And the first thing is that there are actual suggestions on the top. So right now the suggestions is letting me to know to change my wallpaper. If you find this annoying, you can go ahead and press the three buttons here and hit the remove button and the suggestions will go away. But the biggest change to the settings menu is the information that you're given. So you have a lot more information about each settings tab than you did before. So for example, under notifications, it lets me know that I have 53 apps installed. For example, by display, I have adaptive brightness and it's on. And for storage, it shows me exactly how much storage is being used. So it's giving you a lot more information without having to dive right into the setting itself. But the setting itself also has changed a little bit too. We have some new graphics that are showing the battery saver life. And since we're talking about battery, Doze is also getting improved as well. Google didn't really say how it's getting improved, but it will perform a lot better than it does now on Android Marshmallow. And we should see a lot better battery life. Now, instead of going back to the settings menu by tapping the back button, if I actually swipe to the right, I'll get a quick view of all the settings that are currently in the main menu 
and it's kind of a quick way to get to another setting without going back. Now I'm not sure exactly how much time this will save, but it's there. Now one thing I want to talk about is the display size. You can now actually change the size of things on your screen without just changing the font. So for example, if I go to the display size under here, that's for the font, I can make the fonts really big by just dragging my finger left or right, which is a lot easier. And I can also change like the DPI of the screen as well. So instead of leaving it at the default, if I want to make everything bigger, I can just make it scroll left or right. It's a little buggy right now, but you get the idea. Very good for people who have eye problems and need bigger text and bigger icons on their screen. All right, so let's pop out of this and take a look at the Android N logo and see what it looks like. So just simply tap on the Android N version, and this is what the new logo looks like. It kind of looks like a ribbon. Not sure what the N means. It can mean Nutella, it can mean Nugget, it can mean Northwest Nigerian Cream Pie. No one really knows, but all I know is that there are endless possibilities. Either way, you can go ahead and double tap on it to find out if there are any Easter eggs. And of course, it's gonna be the same kind of flappy bird game that we've kind of grown accustomed to. But you get the idea of what Android N is all about. All right, so that wraps up our first impressions of Android N. And just like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it's a very early build. This is not the final product. There's a lot more features coming along later on down the road. Now, the great thing about it is Google's allowing you to update your device over the air so you don't have to keep on downloading those factory images. It just makes the process a lot easier. Now, I want to know what your favorite feature of Android N is so far. And if there's anything you want in the next version of Android, down in the comments below. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and don't forget to visit us at www.mobilesyrup.com.